Hello friends and fellow gamers, MKXJump here, and this week we're going to be checking out the event for Idle Heroes, which is a Viking Saga event. Strangely, this doesn't coincide with Sky Labyrinth like normal, it instead coincides with Profit Orbs, which is quite strange. So we're going to see DH Games' interpretation of merging Profit Orbs with the Viking Saga, whether it's any good, and whether you, as a free-to-play player, or as a spender, should even consider going for this event, because it's close to anniversary, and oftentimes people want to max maximize their value. And whenever I part with money, I like to feel like I'm getting good rewards. So is this week a good event for you? Let's find out. Before we do though, let me remind you about Patreon. It's a way you can support the channel and get perks on Discord as well, including access to account reviews, which we do on the second, third, and fourth Tuesday of every month. For information about account reviews or just anything to do with our Discord community, join our Discord. It's in the description. And if you want to know about Patreon, click the link up there. Shout out to this week's patrons. We have Sonics, Destiny, and Brom Plays. So thank you for your support, folks. And I look forward to seeing you on Discord for account reviews soon at some point. With all that said, let's go check out this week's event for Idle Heroes. So, every single day for logging in, we're going to get ourselves sweet lollipops and profit orbs. Very standard stuff for a profit orb event with Fantasy Factory. These lollipops can be used to get you progress in the Fantasy Factory, and orbs can be used, obviously, for your profit summons. Is it worth using those profit orbs? Well, let's go take a look at the event and find out. First of all, make sure you go ahead and cash in your Food City Feast rewards, as this will get you a ton of rewards if you've managed to get enough burgers. If you've got to around 2700, 2800, I recommend if you're a budget player to use your Universal Crystals, or even if you're a spender for that matter, to push yourself up to getting Star Spawn Calls. These are super useful. Star Spawn Core 5s are actually rarer than Star Spawn Core 6s, as 6s are often given as top rewards in events. So grab these to upgrade your star spawns and make them more powerful. If you can't get that far, I recommend going for skin chests and heroic summon scrolls, but if you're an earlier player, maybe a glory epic chest is for you to help you get copies of the much needed heroes for your account, such as maybe a carry, a Tix, or an Eloise. Anyway, let's go take a look at the value packages for this week. We've got our usual stuff, we've got profit orbs, we've got sweet lollipops, and we have superior tribute. This meat can be given to a dragon, which we'll take a look at in a second to get some rewards. Is it going to be worth it? Could you even use starry gems for this? Well, we need to go see if this is a good event first, but I'm warning you guys, it might not be everything it's cracked up to be. For Fantasy Factory, usual stuff here, use your shapes, drop them in, get rewards, very standard stuff. I've absolutely high rolled here getting two triangles back to back. That feels pretty good actually. You can exchange your rewards. I tend to stick to the right-hand side as this gives better stuff. We've got Spirit, we've got Gold, we've got Celestial Island resources, and Aurora Stars can be saved for future events. Stockpiling these means when we do get events like this week, which give you additional bonuses for using Honey Stars, you can use those Aurora Stars as well to get you better rewards. So when an event like that pops up that gives you really good stuff, then you'll feel good that you saved. Most players, though, will come down to get the 9-star Light Puppet and then stop. You can typically do that in a week's worth of playing, where you're probably going to clear around five of these areas and that should get you enough to do that anyway let's go check out the profit summon event over here we have for a top reward elena which is good they leaked this last time but sometimes they just fall through on their leaks so i'm glad they were actually truthful this time and we got sword flash as well or seer anyway which can be used to make sword flash so that's pretty good for some of you and cause of transcendence and soul symbols if you need them some people might want to do a little bit here just to get five soul symbols but it's up to you whether it's worth it to get the soul symbols. Typically, though, I would only use profit orbs if they're going to get you top rewards in an event. So we will take a look at the bonus stuff in a second. And finally, we have Heroic Miracle, which is getting you a Vulcan as a top reward. To unlock him, you need to do three light five stars, three dark five stars, and five five stars in every other faction. This can be done through fusions, pulling them from the bag, going in the compass of Transcended. There's tons of ways to get five stars. This should be easy for everybody. Anyway, given all that stuff, let's see if the Viking Saga event itself is worth it. There's a lot to unpack here. If you've never done a Viking Island event before, let me give you pretty much the summary of it. In the Celestial Island, you can improve the way your island looks by giving it bonus skins. They are more than just cosmetic. These skins will improve your prosperity, which actually gives you better percentages of the produced resources here. Mainly extra gold, magic dust, and gems, which is pretty nice. So if you care about getting increased resource generation, then it might be worth going after the Viking Saga event. That said, though, just by building these skins, you're going to get additional rewards as well. Some of them give six-star chests, some of them are giving Celestial Island resources, and this middle hut is giving you a glory epic hero selection chest. 
Whether any of this is worth it for you, though, well, if you're an established player, I would encourage you to go for the wood and the rock and all the other Celestial Island resources. That's pretty great. But if you've never, ever done a Viking Island event before, maybe you want to consider getting these. These are upgraded buildings for the Cloud Island. Whenever you see someone with an upgraded Cloud Island where the text is purple and it's over 100, in this case 105 is the highest you can get, the reason we get to that level is because we have a skin that gives us five bonus levels. Also, you get much better bonuses from Transcendence Heroes. If you take a look at my Asmodel here, he's getting 3 million attack from a Halora, but the Tussalago isn't giving as much, and even if that was a Tree of Origin 5 Tussalago, it would not give anywhere near as much as a Transcendence Hero is capable of. So if you want the better bonuses for your account, if you're limited on what you can pick up, you want to go with Building 2 and Building 4. For context, that's going to be the Central Market. That's good if you're using, let's say, a Sword Flash or a Lord of Fear Aspen as your first Transcendence Hero you will get to go alongside them goes in Tenant Spot 2, and for some heroes like a Mockman, you might want to go grab yourself the Spring Well, because Tenant Spot 4 is super useful for that too. Grabbing these skins improves your Celestial Island and your stats as well, and also gets you a few bonus rewards, which in this case for the Spring Well is Glorious Relics. Some of you might be enticed by 30 Master's Toolboxes to help you improve stuff here. That's not a lot of Master's Toolboxes, unfortunately, but it is still something. Some of you might want to go with the Musical Fountain and stuff like that. I don't think this is worth it. The Fountains don't give significantly good bonus, is, so maybe keep the flower terrace and musical fountains away from your investments. It's probably not worth it. If you build all of these, you'll get a 10-star hero. Not that that's really anything, you know, truly impactful. And unfortunately, what they did in the past was if you built all the buildings in the first area, you would get an additional thing called the Viking Scene, which would get you even more prosperity points. The last time we had a Viking Saga, they forgot to add it, and this time as well, they forgot to add it. I'm rather annoyed. I've sent a message to the developers asking them why, for two events in a row now, they've not given us the Viking Scene, because for you newer spenders and for you players that want to get full, complete Celestial Island, the fact they're not not giving it to you really screws you over. Hopefully there's something here for everybody to go ahead and complete, however, you won't really know what you're able to build until the end of the week, because the only place you can get the resources needed for these, the timber and the rock, is by of course giving meat to this dragon, which you will accumulate across the week. That meat will then get you those timbers and stones, which then you can use a bit of clever maths to work out how exactly you can best use it to maximize the rewards. Maybe you don't have a lot of timber, so you need to think how to use that effectively. Maybe you don't have a lot of stone, so you need to figure out how to use that effectively. Also, there's something else. If you already have a lot of skins, you can actually convert skins for additional resources. This is quite exciting. You're getting additional Celestial Island resources, which is really, really cool for a lot of us older players that have already got all the skins, and therefore Celestial Island resources are the main thing we need. So this week really does feel like pretty much a get as many Celestial Island resources as you can event. I'm into that, honestly, and that's totally fine. However, where on earth do we get this meat from that isn't value packs? Well, right here it says, if you get 10 honey stars, you can go ahead and get a piece of meat. However, typically, if you don't spend any money on lollipops, you can only really get to about 450, maybe 650 if you hit a jigsaw stage. You could even squeeze up maybe to 700. That said, though, that's not even going to get you 70 meat if you high roll, and if you just don't hit a jigsaw stage, that's only going to get you 45 meat. That's not a lot. Then, to get more, you have to use three profit orbs just to get one. Oh boy, and I'm not impressed by that because actually if you look at the bonus rewards that we're getting, they suck. If you get to 50 points, which you can't even do with a basic week in the Fantasy Factory, all you get is an extra couple sweet lollipops, some profit orbs, and a five star. If you do actually get top rewards, you need to get to 150 points, which just isn't going to happen. It is not viable. Because when we've had this in the past, where you could use gems to actually spend them on mysterious chests, which also contained this meat. It's not available to us this time around, so we're just being screwed over. An artifact is all you're getting for 150 as well. For you to invest in this as a free-to-play player, what you have to do is get to 45 on Honeystars, then use a ton of profit orbs, like 300 plus profit orbs, just to get an artifact. Now, for some of you, that's great. You might want to use 320 profit orbs, do your honey stars, walk away with an artifact, and that's a good event for you. In which case, great. But if you don't really want artifacts and you want to be saving for sublimation, well, you've got to go all the way down to 300 to have a chance to get sublimation. 
Unfortunately, that's just not going to happen for a free-to-play player. The fact the sublimation is out of reach for free-to-plays, it's, it's 2023. Why on earth are we punishing free-to-play players like that? It's so stupid. If you do 600 profit orbs, you're only going to get 200 points. If you then have a great run in the Honey Stars, you're still not going to get that extra 100 points you need. So you're just going to get screwed over. There's no way you can get sublimation as a free-to-play player, which I think is hilarious, because then if you look at this package which spenders can buy, Basically, if you don't want to use any profit orbs this week, you go ahead and buy this package for a hundred bucks. You get that double bonus from the Honey Stars. You're going to walk away with a sublimation chest for a hundred bucks. That just doesn't feel worth it. And if you want to get another sublimation chest, you're going to have to use profit orbs as well. For me, that's kind of cringe. Having to spend a hundred bucks just for one sublimation chest, there isn't even an option of getting cores. If you want to get a core here, a core of origin chest, you have to go all the way down to 600 and it's only half a core. Really, really awful rewards. And also, the fancy special bonus we're getting this adventure gift is just an insult. It is just transcendence chests. No stellar shards, no essence, nothing. None of the resources we actually like as players, which is awful value again. They don't understand that the things spenders want are things to improve their sublimation, yes, of course, but we also want stellar shots. We want to get crystals of transcendence. We want to get treasure train bonuses. If you're going to add something like the treasure train, understand that that's going to depreciate the value of everything else you're trying to give us in the game. There is no way a spender at all will logically buy this package thinking it is good value because the bonus rewards you are getting suck. So even if you are a whale, I recommend this week you spend nothing because the value just isn't worth it. There's no moonlight gift event, nothing giving you extra bonuses. There's no way to get starry gems reliably this week. It is just trash. I really think DH Games really just didn't put any effort into this event, either because they've worked so hard on the Fantasy Arcade, which is boogie in and of its own right, and also maybe they're trying hard for Anniversary and just just copy and pasted this from last time and just didn't think how it was going to integrate well with Profit Orbs. I just think this week is going to be a huge flop, and I think DH Games are going to feel that when they see how much money they make this week. I don't think this is selling at all. I think the only good thing about this week's event is that you can go ahead and swap skins you already have for Celestial Island resources, and I think the free-to-play players and just everybody in general will just go ahead, get some free Celestial Island resources by giving whatever meat we can get from the Fantasy Factory to this dude, and then just saying, right, I'm done. That's it. That's it. Maybe, maybe you'll use some Profit Orbs to get a free artifact. That's it. That is all that's happening this week that's good value. Everything else just seems disappointing. Even this package seems bad. If there were more rewards going around, they've done profit all events so much better than this in the past, where we can spend some gems, get some good stuff, get tons of rewards. Compare this to last profit all events, this event is a stinker. From the mecha raid onwards, we've had good profit all event after good profit all event. DH Games screwed this one bad style. Next week, we have this, which is a Sky Labyrinth event, that might be good, we'll have to wait and see, or it could be terrible. They've still gone with uh, Garuda as a reward in Wishing Fountain again, fair enough, uh, we'll see if that's true next time. And uh, I'm not expecting this event to be very good either. This close to Anniversary, I just think the devs are putting all their resources, time and effort into making sure Anniversary works, which I can feel it. You can really feel that this week is a half assed event, and the fact that they didn't even put the Viking scene in here is just icing on the cake. So yeah, I think um, it's not a great week. I think for a lot of us, we're just going to sit here, accumulate resources, wait until the end, and then just cash in for Celestial Island resources. And if you're free to play or even a spender, just coast through. I don't think it's worth your money at all. I know it's a bit of a downer. I know this event was probably hyped by some, but it really doesn't seem to be a good one at all. And uh, yeah, hopefully the devs learn from this because at the end of the day, they're a company that tries to make money. But this week, it seems like they've tried as hard as possible to make us not want to buy anything, which I just find hilarious. Big misplay from DH Games. Such a shame. But folks, that's just the way it goes sometimes. I'll see you next time. For more event reviews like this, hit that subscribe button. And I hope you have a good week and happy idling.